Hello and welcome to Hash It Out. I'm your host, Luca, and today joining me is our guest, Brooke Novick, who is a licensed psychedelic therapist. So, Brooke, uh, what is psychedelic therapy and what kind of plants are used? Oh, hi. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. So, psychedelic therapy is when we use psychedelic medicines for the purpose of healing and growth. So it means arriving at this work with intention. And so it's it's not recreational, it's really to help one heal. Um, and the types of medicines that are used, you ask? Yeah. So there's, there's a variety of medicines. You know, the one you work with will really depend on what you're feeling most called to work with. So there's psilocybin containing mushrooms, ayahuasca, ketamine, MDMA, um, that's just to name a few. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so uh, is it currently legal in New York State or? So it depends on the medicine you're working with. Ketamine is legal. Um, psilocybin is not yet, but there's a lot of studies going on and psilocybin will likely become legal in a few years along with MDMA. For sure. Yes. And, how, and how long have you been doing this for? So I've been a therapist for about 11 years, but I got trained in psychedelic therapy in 2017. What are uh, some ways that you've seen them be significantly impacting uh, people like that you've worked with, for example? Yeah. Oh, I've seen so, so, so much. And that doesn't mean the medicine does the work for us because it doesn't, but it's, it's not a cure, but it's a tool. Um, I've seen people oh my goodness, heal, like depression that has just been persistent, you know, going on for years and years, um, eating disorders, anxiety, um, you know, a lot of sexual abuse trauma, this has been so helpful for in, in clients I've worked with. Um, yeah. Uh, your website mentions the sacred aspects of these plants and like that it's a sacred earth medicine. Could you like elaborate a little bit on the spiritual side of psychedelics? Yeah, totally. So a lot of people use these medicines recreationally. So like they take them, they go to concerts or festivals and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you know we're being safe. But when we arrive at this work with intention and, and like a, you know, when we honor the sacredness of these medicines, that's when really, really deep healing and expansion can occur. So if you go to a concert and you're being safe, that's totally okay. But the work that you're doing will not really support long-term healing and transformation. But if you come at this in a really sacred way and in an intentional way, and you really, um, you know, honor the, the medicine and what it can help you with, that's when deep healing can occur. And part of that means preparing for the experience and then integrating the experience once you've had it. So taking time to process it and talk about it and really think, okay, what was this experience trying to help me with? How was it trying to help me? And how can I implement what I learned into my daily life? That's where the healing really, really occurs. Um, and so we are talking about the upsides of this, but what are the main downsides or risks of psychedelic therapy that you've seen? Yeah, it's such a great question. So this work is not for everyone. People who have diagnoses of bipolar one or schizophrenia or people who have ever had um, a manic episode or who struggle with psychotic episodes, I would not recommend it at all because these medicines can make, you know, can exacerbate symptoms in those situations and make them worse or just bring the symptoms up to the surface. Um, but otherwise, you know, for most people, this work is very safe when it's done in a safe setting, you know, with someone who can support you through the process. Okay, great. Um, and uh, last question, uh, what would you say to someone who's like hesitant or a little bit skeptical of psychedelic therapy? I would say there's no rush, take your time, work, you know, do this work when it feels right for you. And on the flip side of that, being afraid is really natural when you're doing this work. And I would say, don't let your mind or your ego stop you from doing something that you're feeling really intuitively called to. 
Um, and, you know, we have so many resources. If you're feeling afraid, we have a free podcast episode that you can listen to. The fear is natural and there's no rush. So take your time. But also, if you're feeling a deep call to this, don't let the fear stop you. Sorry. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and thank you. These uh, answers were really insightful. Thank you so much. You asked such beautiful questions. No, yeah, of course. Of course I appreciate it.